Yeah. Uh, today we are going to visualize some of the data from Drupal.org made available via its API. <clears throat> this data is somewhat indicative of the community behind uh, Drupal. And uh, I, I hope these visualizations give a picture to uh, give a picture of these numbers. So I am Hussein Abbas, uh, and uh, actually this is the second time I've been given the last session of the day. It's uh, it's it's like always a challenge, you know. Back in Barcelona, I was the only person between everyone and the beach. Over here, it's everyone and uh, uh, whatever is around here. Uh, I have been working with PHP since about uh, 15 years and with Drupal for about six years. I'm now a technical architect at Accelerant. Uh, when I came uh, came to New Orleans, uh, actually not not uh, not only, just this Monday when the conference started, there was a, a haunted history tour organized by MEZ Labs, and uh, uh, throughout the tour, uh, the guide, the tour, the tour guide who walked us through paid special attention to all the specifics and the numbers of everything that happened. And even though I believe, I mean, of course, you know, it's just stories, you know, all these haunted stories at um, these various houses. Uh, for example, this house over here, uh, uh, I don't think so I can pronounce this. Uh, but uh, so even though these are just stories, it's really just about... Uh, <coughs> Uh, the numbers, you know, they, they they kind of give a richness behind these stories, and uh, I like to collect these as data. I am actually uh, always been fascinated with collecting uh, numbers and data uh, of my own personal life, you know, in an organized manner. And I just don't mean Excel, you know. I I religiously check in everywhere. I use Tripit, I use Nucash, I use you know all, all these apps that basically collect data in a format that I can use, and I can. Uh, process them however I want later. And this, that brings me to Drupal contributions. Uh, so I've been a contributor to Drupal core and you know modules and everything since about uh, two or three years. And until recently there was no uh, real way to quantify that data. It was, uh, it was actually available, I just didn't know about it. And uh, you might have heard of drupalcores.com that, uh, that basically counts the commit credits you have on uh, Drupal 8. So uh, that was the only metric I had, basically. Uh, and uh, last year in Los Angeles, I, uh, David Hernandez and myself, we gave a talk on um, Im improving community contributions. Uh, you know, identifying what's causing community contributions to uh, stay in a long tail. So if you have looked at those contribution graphs, you would know that around 70 to 80 percent of people just have one or two commit mentions and we were looking at how we can pull that up and of course we looked at data from drupal.org and uh, we, we got this data from Drupal Association at that time and I always wanted to get the access to the raw data and eventually I found the API you know, I didn't uh, I didn't want to scrape obviously I didn't want to scrape drupal.org uh, I found the uh, API this year when in uh, DrupalCon Asia, which was held last February uh, in Mumbai, a company called Azri Solutions organized a contest, uh, basically, you know, to build a visualization for what, from whatever data you collect from Drupal.org. And I participated. I, I didn't really expect to win. You know, I've never won things in life. Uh, but I was actually hoping that, you know, whatever libraries I build out of uh, this contest, I would use it for my own uh, projects, which I, which I had, you know, there are a lot of projects which I, which are quite shelled up from quite, quite a long time. I was hoping to use all of these libraries over there, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Drupal.org is not uh, a small site. You know, a lot of, you know, just getting the users took about a week uh, on my instance. Well, anyway, in spite, you know. If, whatever, I actually won the contest, and uh, I'm actually hoping to take it further today. Uh, and in that process, I want to just uh, share some numbers and some of the things that I found uh, while uh, building all these visualizations. So a uh, little bit about the technology itself of this uh, website. Uh, it's called drustats.com, by the way, D-R-U-S-T-A-T-S.com. Uh, well, the idea is that, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I'm, I'm hoping for more contributions to that in terms of 
not just in terms of spirit, but pull requests as well. Um, it is, uh, it's built with Laravel 5.2. It, uh, it uses MongoDB to store all the data. It's convenient, you know, MongoDB stores all the JSON written by Drupal.org API as, uh, uh, as it is, you know. I don't need to worry about the schema or whatever differences I need to uh, verify. And actually it has got a great aggregation pipeline which, which, I, which actually helps in processing all the numbers. Um, and it's pretty fast. For a single instance, it's actually pretty fast. Uh, I, I use Beanstalk for queuing, um, so every 24 hours all the objects get queued up, so all the nodes, uh, different type of nodes, forums, uh, issues, modules, uh, and all that, that, they get updated every 24 hours. And uh, on the front end, uh, the graphs, the charts themselves are shown using a D3, uh, that, that's a data-driven document uh, library. And I use Bootstrap just for the, it's a very simple thing, there's not much to it just uses bootstrap you know for just getting it up and ready uh, quick note on d3 uh, d3 is actually very very basic if you have used it uh, you would know it's very low level uh, there are very various reusable libraries on top of it uh, i have not uh, i did not really have time to evaluate each one of them so uh, suggestions over there are welcome so uh, data collection is an important part of data science, but it's actually a relatively simple one. You know, what is more important is asking the right question. All the, all the data in the world are just numbers until someone asks the question to transform that data into the information that you're interested in. And my main goal with this information is not just to present the data I've collected, but also to identify what questions we can ask from uh, this data. Uh, so let's jump in. Uh, projects are an important point of uh, community, and it's it's actually useful to know how they are growing. Uh, so this chart shows the growth of all the projects. Uh, yeah, this chart shows the growth of all the projects since the beginning. It's uh, since around uh, you can see from 2004. Uh, you can see roughly uh, as of right now, we have about 34,000 plus modules, 2,000 themes and uh, distributions, 1,000 distributions or so, uh, 200 core projects. So core projects are basically Drupal.org, uh, sorry, Drupal core projects which have been forked for you know, testing and playing, and some 20 or so theme engines. Uh, you can, actually on the website you can filter out these data, but in this chart you can't really see because most of it has been taken up by the module itself, uh, just the modules. Uh, so you can actually see the difference between um, the modules and themes, you know, it's what, almost 20 times modules, uh, you know, are present uh, than compared to the themes. Uh, so a few, few things of note over here, you know, around 2011 you can see that there has been a slight, uh, there is actually a jump in how the projects have increased, you know. Uh, the curve which was growing slowly suddenly uh, accelerates, you can actually see that clearly over here. Uh, so it, this graph is slightly inaccurate because, uh, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's more like a histogram and I should have used a bar chart. Uh, but, you know, the, 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 for the most part you see it's accurate. And you can see uh, basically around 2011, uh, there suddenly there were, what, about 60 projects created, 60 plus. And I'm guessing that's, uh, that's when Drupal 8 development started and, you know, a lot of projects got out of co or something, you know, I mean, uh, I've not really evaluated this further, but it's actually an interesting thing. Uh, what's even more interesting is that after that, uh, we are seeing uh, consistently more uh, projects being added in. So uh, until 2011, you can see on average, you know, around five projects get added in. Uh, but after that, you know, it, it it's kind of doubles almost, uh, doubles or almost triples in some, some cases. And uh, the graph is kind of fuzzy, that's really because it's on a weekly cycle, it's it's just not uh, resolved uh, to that resolution. It just shows, uh, I mean, all the jumps. Uh, so uh, the projects, uh, I mean, like from back of hand calculations, I saw, you know, more projects were created on Friday, if I remember correctly, compared to other days. So that's when you see the peaks. Actually, on the website, you can zoom in to see the dates where, wherever these peaks are. Um, we can look at it a bit later. We can look at it after the thing. Uh, this is 
actually just a bonus graph here it's it's a bubble chart uh, bubble chart uh, sorted by all the modules uh, so sorted by the number of downloads in each module uh, so well there's no surprise the views is the highest uh, over here followed by ec tools token um, this is there is a similar chart for all the projects not just modules but that's mostly just filled with modules you know it's a uh, um, I mean, obviously, Drupal Core is the highest number of highest downloaded uh, project, um, and the highest downloaded theme is Zen. But apart from that, it basically follows the same structure. Uh, these modules, uh, that chart is mostly filled with all modules. Well, another way to look at project is the number of issues. Uh, so this chart over here it shows uh, all the uh, projects on D. O. Uh, with uh, number of issues, so you can see Drupal Core, for example, has seventy-four thousand plus issues. Um, Webmasters twenty-two thousand. Webmasters is the Drupal.org content, content on Drupal.org, and that has around 20, 22 thousand issues, and and so on. You can see this over here. Now, this could actually be uh, assigned to. Uh, this could actually be a way to see the active projects on D.O. Uh, it's not so much of a sign of a uh, of the code quality of these projects. Uh, it's more about how many people are involved with that project and how many issues were created. Uh, the next one, this oh, this chart is slightly different. It shows the actual open issues right now per project. And uh, this is kind of, uh, you know, you could correlate this with uh, the quality of code. Uh, so again, uh, no surprises here. Uh, Drupal core is uh, with around 14,000 plus open issues at the moment. Open issues is everything, you know, open, uh, active, fake, fixed. Uh, all the issues get fixed. Uh, issues get closed after two weeks after they're fixed. Uh, so uh, in those two weeks, they're still counted as open. And uh, RTBC, uh, all this, you know, needs work, needs review, all these issues are counted as open. And there are such 14,000 such issues on core, 4,000 on views, and uh, so on. Uh, OK. Uh, and uh, really, you know, the, what what's uh, what what can be seen here is that uh, if you can imagine, it's more of a long tail. Uh, that that Drupal Core has significantly more issues or open issues compared to any other project. You know, it quickly falls down. It's from fourteen thousand to four thousand to two thousand to thousand five hundred, and then it kind of stabilizes. So this is what is the long tail in this graph. Uh, it's not shown here though. And uh, th that's another interesting thing about the, how, how the projects uh, get developed. So Drupal Core is a highly organized effort. Everything, every commit that happens, happens through issues. Uh, this is usually not the case with many of the contrib modules. Many contrib modules are very particular about this. You know, there is always an issue for whatever change that goes in. You know, views, for example, of course. Uh, others are not so much. You know, there is an issue, you just fix it. You don't create an um, issue on Drupal.org for it. Uh, so this, uh, we can, we could just look at you know, the overall issue count on Drupal.org. It's uh, uh, as of this morning, it was almost 900,000 issues, uh, and it's all issues, you know, open, closed, everything. Uh, so this this pie chart breaks up uh, uh, the issues into bug reports, and uh, further into the the priority of each and the status of those issues. So. Uh, it's actually an interactive. You over your you take your mouse over the each of the slices, and it'll show you how many issues are there under that. And you can actually filter per uh, module. Uh, so this basically, uh, I mean, it's again like I said earlier. You know, it's about asking the right question. Uh, so uh, if you are looking at, uh, for example, one of the modules we saw earlier, of like OG or views. You know, what's uh, how how are the issue, how do the issues look at in those modules? You know, this. You can actually go to the website and filter it just for issues on views module or issues on uh, OG module. Um, another thing is that uh, those those big maroon slices you see most of them they are actually closed and fixed issues, and uh, like there are few there is a legend over there I don't think so it's visible on the screen right now, uh, but basically in each uh, slice it, there are about 75 percent of issues are closed, so. Uh, it kind of correlates with the earlier graphs we saw, you know, uh, which is about 20% of issues are closed. I'm sorry, 20% of issues remain open compared to the overall number of issues that are present. 
uh, then let's uh, let's uh, look at the users I and mean, of course users are the community uh, drupal.org as of again as of this morning has about 1.9 million users and uh, this is how they mostly split up in different countries uh, it's no surprise usa has about three and a half times that of india which has twice the users of uh, great britain uh, it's Great Britain internally, United Kingdom of Great Britain, uh, which is about three times of Canada and Indonesia. Uh, then it, it follows on, you know, the, there is a list. I, I think Germany, I believe Germany is next. And uh, there are about 757,000 users which have no country set. Uh, the field is null, basically. And uh, will we come back to talking about the countries? There's another graph of, uh, you know, how the uh, users have grown in each country. Uh, we'll actually look at some of the data there, uh, but just some other things. So, languages spoken by uh, users on D.O. Again, um, English is uh, there's no surprise there. English is uh, the highest with 66,000 users speaking English. Say they speak English. Uh, around 8,000 say uh, Spanish, uh, French, German, and Russian. So again, it's it's kind of English is uh, almost what eight times compared to other languages. But uh, if you look at the amount of users that have not specified the language, you know, these numbers are very small. It's 1.8 million users have not specified the language, which makes this sample size too small to really discern anything. It's, it's just a number for now. And the next, this next visualization just shows it further. This expertise is even of uh, lesser value. 99% uh, of users have not put in any expertise. Uh, so. Uh, but still, from what we can see, you know, developers, site builders, themers, they are mostly the same, 2,000 or 3,000 users each, uh, 1,500 project managers, uh, one, and site building 300. So actually, site build and site building, site building are same, obviously, semantically, but uh, this is a free text field, so users can put in whatever they want to. Um, anyway, this is, like I said, again, the sample size is too small to really make out anything compared to uh, almost 2 million users. It's uh, 3,000 users saying developers is not really an indication of anything. Uh, so over the past few years, this is how the users have grown on uh, D.O. Uh, so assume, let's assume that if the UIDs have always been assigned sequentially, uh, which right now the UID is around, I think the latest UID is around 3.5 million, uh, we can Imagine, you know, we can guess that around 1.6 million users have been blocked or removed. Uh, it's very easy to, I, I think they must be spam. Uh, we see small jumps in this data. So around, you know, mid-2012, you see there is a jump. Uh, and then they're like small. It's not really significant, but I think the most significant jump over here is in 2012. And this actually makes it a little bit more clearer where the jumps are. And so ignore the first two peaks. Again, again, uh, like I said, this is... This should not really be a line graph. It should be a bar chart. Uh, it's, this is just like a quick chart I constructed. Uh, so it's basically, you know, from the beginning, it seems like there were 2,000 users migrated. And until mid-2003, there, no, no, there were no new users. Until in 2004, there were again around 2,500 users migrated. So uh, by the way, I checked this chart. The dates are actually uh, the same uh, for all these users. So it's not a bug in the code. Uh, but after that, you can see it's it's uh, pretty accurate. Uh, so again, there is a uh, peak in, uh, like we saw, you know, mid-2012. And we can actually see that uh, in one of the upcoming charts, what that could be. Uh, this is, again, a small thing, you know. Uh, gender ratio has always been something I look forward to. You know, in all the uh, camps and meetups I organize, this is one thing I always measure, gender ratio. And on Drupal.org, gender ratio works out to a uh, about, uh, what was it? Actually calculated it, but I forgot the percentage right now. Around 74%, I think. Uh, so uh, you have, as of, again, today, as of today morning, you have around 135,000 users identifying as male, uh, 28,000 as female. Around 1,000, say, other, they have not specified, and 200 as uh, transgender. And uh, the users that have not filled this at all, they are about 91% uh, of users have not filled this at all. So uh, the sample size is still kind of small. 10% of the population is not 
uh, significant. But it, at least uh, we know it matches up with what we observe. Again, if you see, you know, it, uh, we see the same uh, jumps that we saw earlier. So similarly, you know, this is again a similar chart, but it's split by country. Now this was actually a heavy chart to render. It actually uh, crashed Firefox, and in Chrome it stopped playing all the animations. Um, it, it's basically splitting up all the users per country. Uh, so the the big gray one you see on the uh, the, the biggest one you see on the bottom, that's actually users that have not specified a country at all. Uh, the next orange one is uh, United States. After that, the red one is India. So uh, if you remove this, you know, I mean, if you just like uh, visualize this, uh, remove this from, uh, remove the, the, the bottom gray one, you know, the ones with no country specified. Uh, all the other countries are close to, are linear. They're pretty much linear. You can actually, if you see the, the gray is the uh, is the part of the graph which is responsible for the jump. It increasingly seems like you know that there were a lot of spam users that got in on that day. And uh, so, if you take that out, you know, I mean, we still see that uh, United States and India have been growing, uh, 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 you know, faster than compared to other regions. But they're still linear. All the countries they're pretty much linear. Which is what is expected, I think. You know, we are, uh, our growth has not accelerated. It's, the growth is there, but it has been mostly constant. So all these visualizations, they are on roostats.com. Some of them are not listed on menu, but it's actually the same data, same code. And uh, I'd appreciate feedback, contributions, you know, on that. Uh, just create issues there, pull, uh, pull request or tweet on, just let me know by Twitter. Uh, I'm looking to, you know, keep uh, building this website. So, what do you think? Uh, so, questions, and uh, of course, you know, please leave feedback for the so, session. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. So, what do you need to make it better? Well, uh, like like I said in the beginning, you know, it's important that we ask the right questions. So, all this data is there, and all the visualizations are there. But if you're not uh, deriving anything of value over here, it's useless. So it's important to ask the right question, and we can always build that. Um, well, Josh Mitchell, I'm the CTO of the okay. Drupal Association. Oh, so my team you know, works on Drupal.org, can do improvements to Drupal.org. We can also help others get improvements onto Drupal.org. So one of the things that I would love to see is some contribution around uh, helping define what should be in the API, what are the things that would help identify better data so that your visualizations can be more accurate. So um, yeah, any, any help we can get there I think would be helpful. True, yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm assuming uh, all, the, the, all the code for which drives this API is on D.O, is that right? I've actually not looked into it, I meant to look into it after Drupal Con Asia, but the documentation <laughs> could probably use some uh, a little bit of help. But the, the basics are all on Drupal.org slash Drupal.org slash API. Yeah, uh, that, that's the instructions. No, what I'm saying is uh, the code that drives this API. I, I believe oh, it's, it's a REST all under, uh, project Drupal.org. Yeah, so that's the, right. the main custom is. But it is using RestWS, the module. We've only implemented what is out of the box with RestWS, mm -hmm. but I think we would need to extend it to, uh, to basically add additional data into the API. The trick would be doing that in a performant way because some of those queries. Can be yes. Uh, from, so what I found over here was that there were many API calls that could actually be a lot better. So uh, internally, users refer to a field collection. And field, col uh, field collection then points to, let's say, an organization, right? So uh, this actually makes me, uh, ma you know, this actually uh, uh, means that I have to make the API call twice to get the organization for the user, right? Because just getting the field collection ID is not enough. I have to see what uh, organization is uh, stored in the field collection. So things like these, you, you know, it's the same thing that happens to the projects. Uh, so projects have releases, but the releases themselves are under, under field collection. So uh, you, you know, simplifying the API, you know, instead of just IDs, the actual data over there, it actually uh, speeds up the indexing. 
Another thing I noticed over here was the, because of which the user graphs are not really uh, that accurate, uh, uh, because users don't have an updated timestamp, which means that I can never get updates to users. And actually, there are uh, users have more entities than any other no, entity over here. Uh, so do, it's not easy to scan through all that two million users to find up updates. Uh, I can do that with nodes because they have a change timestamp and I can sort on change and just retrieve the nodes I need to change within that last 24 hours. I can't do that for users. I can do, uh, I can just get the new users. I can't get updates to the existing users. So these are a few things and I'm open to contribute uh, to make the API better over here. I just had to, you know, oh, no, get absolutely. into it. That's yeah. part of why I was asking because like I, I love the visualizations. Oh, thank you. Uh, very worthy of a motorcycle. I'm gonna <laughs> Um, but I, I want to figure out how we can get more of that and make it more accurate. Um, because I know from querying a lot of the Drupal.org data that, mm -hmm. um, for instance, 1.9 million users is not accurate. We, kn we know that a lot of those are spammer accounts. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, which the, muddies the data and makes it harder to see. Right. So, so the API returns only the up, uh, active users. So the spam users must be blocked, right? No. No? Well, they're not, of them. They're but, not but, written but by the API. I, I'm going to say, of of the 1.9 million accounts, some of them are spam accounts that were created that were never used to create spam. So we yeah, know that true. to be the case. So figuring out what that real number is is actually probably more like querying all the confirmed users or exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah querying yeah. all confirmed users plus users that have been created after uh, the date that our, our spam networks were put in place. Those sorts of things. Yeah, true. Uh, for example, uh, if they have any comments or if they have created any uh, forum, uh, like any any kind of notes, for example, so that would be an indication. Yeah, true. I, I'd love I'd love to see contribution in that space. So thank you for pulling all that together. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, so, um, are there any plans of? Uh, I mean, you know, you might be having or had conversations with uh, your DA folks or whoever is you know people folks who are managing Drupal.org. Are there any plans of embedding any of these charts back into Drupal.org somewhere? Uh, Homepage might be a great place, by the way, but anyway. <laughs> no, I mean, I think Josh can answer that. But yeah, there are no plans as far as I know. I mean, I'd love to help in any way. But again, you know, the visualizations, uh, I'm kind of happy keeping it running separately if that's what, uh, what it needs. Uh, of course, you know, any help. So I'm running this hosting on DigitalOcean. So, right. yeah, so I'm happy to continue doing that. Uh, of course, if Drupal or like Drupal Association prefers to keep it on Drupal.org for some reason, I'm of course, you know, it's, I'm open to contribute over there as well. Josh. Well, I'll respond to that, not only because I, you know, I think it's nice to respond to it, but um, probably not the homepage. We used to have a map on the homepage. I actually think the homepage isn't the best place for visualization because it's already competing for so much attention. Um, True. We could see as we get the API better and we get the, that refined and we figure out what are the things that best describe the community, I would love to have those visualizations on Drupal.org and drive traffic to it because obviously you get more traffic by having it on the home of the community than being on a separate site. But happy to link to it as well. It, it's, it's just a matter of getting them more accurate so that they really tell the story. Um, because Definitely, some of those yeah. are awesome as they are right now and some of them we like for instance the user things, things like that. But I can see a lot of the issues and project stuff we can link to that right now. It's it is okay. really yeah, valuable. That's, that's very, uh, uh, motivating I think uh, Hussein you've got a long way to go and a few uh -huh. good few uh, uh, milestones out there. Uh, we could yeah, you know, let's get this the Drupal dot art ride the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, you know, seeing Indonesia's, you know, the the top five was uh, something new to me. Had it been yeah, data, that I was a surprise to me. Observed that or you know, noticed, but that's where visualization really makes a difference. That that was a surprise to me. Germany was just after it, and I could just fit in six numbers on the slide. So. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Charles Krutz. I'm from Ukraine, and uh, our guys from Drupal Ukraine community did a similar project but uh, we analyzed Drupal.org stats, uh, but our main goals was to compare uh, countries. We compared Eastern Europe countries by uh, developers activity on Drupal.org, but uh, you guys did uh, some other uh, visualizations and actually your visualization are very good. 
Thank you. But you can, uh, maybe you can just uh, re-release uh, our project on Drupal.org. It's available like a model. It's called Drupal.org stats. Maybe okay. you can find some ideas and yeah, implement it in better way. So it's like we can work together and make it even better. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be very happy to. Thank you. Thank you. You can always reach me on Twitter. Uh, so uh, I always go by the Twitter handle. I, I mean, the name Hussein Web pretty much everywhere. Twitter, D dot O. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing this data. I can understand why the folks at the Drupal Association would be interested in this. I was curious why, why you're interested in this particular topic. So, like I explained, you know, data has always been something I've been fascinated about. You know, I collect each and everything in my personal life as well. You know, I mean, like, I, I religiously check in into each and everything, you know, wherever I go. It's on Foursquare. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, note down each and every uh, dollar or rupee, you know. We spend, we have Indian rupee as currency, right? So, I write down each and every, you know, even if it's five rupees, I note it down that I have spent five rupees. It's, I don't know, maybe you can, maybe it's close to an obsession, I guess. But yeah, I try to collect data and not just collect data, but uh, have it in a way which I can process later. Uh, so, of course, you know, I've been interested into many open uh, data storages as well. Uh, so, for example, open data store for uh, trips, open data store for flights. And well, I'm a bit of a procrastinator as well, so I've not really done as much as with the data as I should, or as I want to, but I'll get there someday. <laughs> this is something which I just got around to. So you mentioned a number of times the importance of interpreting the data rather yeah. than just collecting it. And I was curious if, there, if you've thought of many potential goals that you might be able to take this data with. For example, maybe you could also pull in data from other communities and compare it with Drupal data and display it in such a way to help emphasize how Drupal does things in certain ways, maybe you know, that contributions by gender or something like that. Have you, have you looked at pulling in data from other communities that might be available? That thought has crossed my mind, but uh, you know, I've not really, uh, you know, I'm not really built up any ideas around it because uh, it's uh, it's a lot of effort to collect this data. This uh, website took me about 15 whole days to build. You know, I mean, like I spent nights <laughs> building this uh, for the contest to get it uh, ready in time. So uh, it's it's not uh, it's not it's not on my like top list, but it's, it's something which I really want to do. Uh, but more important than that is the gender thing which you mentioned. This is something which I've been actively following. You know, uh, like I said, in the, I organize uh, meetups and camps uh, back home. So this is something which I always try to measure, you know, the gender ratio. Uh, so Drupal cons, we get the number in closing session. We'll get this co conference's number tomorrow. Uh, but again, you know, in camps back home, I always see this number and see how it holds up to the industry trends, you know, which is around 20%, which matches over here, by the way, uh, which matches the camps I have seen, uh, camps I organized back home and the camps I have been to uh, in India. So this is something, you know, this is a number personally I would like to see grow. Uh, so that that's one of the other things. And uh, I wasn't necessarily suggesting you to do more work. I was just curious if you had <laughs> looked into if this data is available or similar data might be available from other well, free software if, communities. Well, if it's there, that's great. I, I am not aware of any you such piece. Okay. I'm, I'm not really, yeah, I'm not really made any effort in that direction. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm actually, that's the best thing about open source, right? You know, I mean, I'm hoping somebody will, like you just said, and you know, so I'm hoping someone will actually say that, okay, there is this data available over here, and let's see if we can build a comparison. Then, yeah, th that makes things easier for me as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I, I think Mike, yeah. What might be the when it did the visualization? So let's talk about Royal Enfield, the motorcycle. It's one of the best motorcycles in India. Uh, since 1955, I do not think there has been any other bike. So that perhaps was one more good reason. <laughs> yeah, it was a reason to get it done finally. <laughs> and I guess I could, I could just add too that I personally am very interested in how the community works and 
how certain decisions come to be made. And I do think it is helpful to have data to maybe uh, uh, compare ideas and then maybe test theories against that. So visualizing it, I do think is helpful. In, in yeah, I, I, I agree, I agree. Okay, uh, and if there are no other questions, I think, uh, I think we're done. Uh, please feel free to, uh, so I don't have my Twitter handle on the slide right now, but it, like I said, it's Hussein Web, uh, pretty much everywhere. You can tweet me there. Uh, I have a Twitter handle for the website as well, Drew underscore stats, so you can tweet there as well. Um, and, and yeah, that's the GitHub repo, Hussein Web slash Drew stats. So you can create issues or pull requests or just look at the code. So there are complete instructions in the repository. You can uh, look on look at how to set it up. Uh, but I mean, if you have any ideas on setting it up, you know, I would love to collaborate. You know, there's no reason you have to go to and scan the whole data set yourself. Yeah. So by the way, uh, this data set, uh, uh, the data set that gets scanned, uh, I strip out all the descriptions from the field. You know, so uh, my primary motivation in doing that was to, uh, you know, not use more disk space than necessary. And anyway, I did not have any uh, ideas on what to do with the description anyway. Uh, I have some ideas. Uh, maybe it's maybe too early for that. Uh, you know, like NLP processing and all that. That could be done on the descriptions. Uh, really, it's too early. So for now, in interest of disk space, I did not uh, uh, think, uh, did not store the descriptions. Uh, but what, is, what matters is the relationship between different entities, and that's there. So. Uh, I think you know that's that's more than enough to you know actually still keep asking the right questions and keep going ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Drewstats.com, all this, yeah. Except uh, some of them which are not in the menus, uh, most of these are there.